Hello ballers, what's going on? It's Preacher. So I'm gonna round up our tanking themed week, week and a half or so, as I took a vacation, with a little basic look at how we create a death ball. I spoke about it heavily in the last tanking video. And uh, some people were like, well, it's pretty easy to do, it kind of naturally happens. But that's now. One of the big things I've noticed, especially when creating this video, is that we overgear everything. It's very, very difficult even to find dungeons that we do not overgear. But pretty soon in Mr. Pandaria, we're not going to overgear things. We're going to be in a whole new scenario. Things are going to be a little bit different. And our control and all that kind of good stuff is really going to be coming back into the fold. It's going to be something we really need to be aware of. So what I did is I put together a little tanking pull guide, essentially, uh, that is looking at all four tanking classes. I can't do the monk just yet, uh, but I'll be throwing the monk in there at a later date. And looking at the tools we have at our disposal as all four tanks, just to create ourselves a very quick death ball. Now, this is just individual trash packs that can be a little bit tricky. Some of them are tricky, Mr. Pandaria Heroic. Some of them are a little bit more difficult than we're used to, especially with the amount of HP that a lot of the mobs have in the Mr. Pandaria Heroics. Creating a solid death ball is going to reduce your your downtime in your dungeons to a really really nice level and keep your speed really nice and fast because speed is important ultimately we're going to be farming these heroics we're going to be getting our gear up getting our points all that kind of stuff we do want to be generally done as fast as possible so what is the death ball the death ball is creating a bunch of mobs in specifically one location every single mob that is in our pull needs to be in one location this allows all the dps to go balls to the wall aoe and also also allows us to do our maximum aoe threat as well if everything's all bunched up together we can keep things nice and tidy mobs will die faster we will tank easier and we're going to have a generally much better time now, thinking of how to put this video together, there was only realistically one pack that stuck out in my memory at the launch of Cataclysm as a particularly a little annoying pack to deal with. And even to this day, people still don't generally do this pack right, but they overgear things so much that it's not a major issue. So, finding a little bit of an example of this going wrong wasn't particularly easy. I tried it on different classes, but ultimately there was a lot of... You know, tanks, specters, DPS, who were just sort of tearing through the dungeon. And a hell of a lot of people with their new spells who aren't really ready to go into an end time heroic for whatever reason. Who are jumping into the older heroics and really sort of demolishing the place in a crazy manner. So I did put together a little pull and it's in the Throne of Tides. The Throne of Tides has two particular pulls that stuck out in my memory as something that needed to be very well organised by the tank. Otherwise there was almost a certain guarantee of death. Uh, for the party. This pull in the very launch of Cataclysm when we had either under leveled gear or just about level specific gear to queue for the dungeon actually caused a hell of a lot of deaths. It required a ton of healing, there was a lot of debuffs going on, not only that it mixed in a couple of healers, it was quite a mess. The idea is that this pull becomes extra difficult because it contains three casters. It can vary, you can have two casters or you can have three. If you have the three caster pull and you're in level appropriate gear or under leveled appropriate gear that it can be a little bit difficult to tricky to deal with especially creating a death ball not all tanks have access to the kind of interrupts and placement utilities that other tanks do so this pull I'm looking at here, I'm going to zoom in right on it. You can see here this has two casters, two of which are healers. It also has another caster which is casting Chain Lightning and two melee mobs which cast Bubble Shield. Bubble Shield causes reflective damage back to the uh, DPSs. So obviously there's a lot going on here. If you wanted to do this very, very well as a five mana, what a lot of people would do, you were dispelling Bubble Shield, you were having interrupts on all three mobs and then you would be in better shape. Letting the healers cast was really un-out DPSable. People out DPS it now. People just flat out out DPS the heals. That's okay. That's fine. That's how it is now. This is not a Throne of Tides guide. This is something you're going to have to be ready for in Mr. Pandaria where the mobs have exceptionally large health pools. Therefore, we can't just out DPS stuff like a chain amount of healers. So let's look at this mob specifically and then let's jump into how the different classes I recommend deal with this and translate that into your Mr. Pandaria heroics. Okay, we've got an example here of a pull done by a normal tank in Cataclysm. Okay, so let's see that. He's not interrupted or pulled anything. As we can see on the side, it's got a freeze frame. We can see our tank, uh, one of our DPSs, our DK, is pulled off to the side. He's got aggro on one of the spirit menders on the other side. The tank can't actually do any DPS to that whatsoever with his current stance. He's got a mini death ball going on the side, but we've got this stray mob that's causing us a little bit of issue from our tanky side that we don't really want. 
as we go on, what we can see if we look over towards the health bars is we can actually see a ton of damage coming in from all sides. We've got our DK with aggro, we've got bubble shields going on everybody. You can see the healers not having a particular great time with this whatsoever. And this is the kind of situation that we'll run into all the time. It's a tank just moving in. He's just moving in as he normally would and he's dealing with it. Nobody's wiping, we're not struggling, we're not having any difficulty but that is because this is patch point 5.04. We've not only got very overgeared casters, very overgeared melee, very overgeared tanks and overgeared healers with all sorts of new and fancy tools. In Mists of Pandaria, we're not going to have this luxury whatsoever. We're really not. We're going to have to really work hard. This is what the whole point of this thing is. As you can see, again, we'll watch our tank. He's just going to leap in. No real regard for the other mobs whatsoever. He's managed to catch that with a couple of uh, with the heroic leap. And he's just going to stand in the middle. He's facing the mobs towards the raid. You can see, again, the health. His bars are starting to dip around. It's not too bad. We've got such great DPS these days that it's not the end of the world. Things are going down. But interrupts aren't being done. You can see the spirit meders are getting off many, many heals. Interrupts have been changed as well to the 8 second cooldown. And you can see the kind of problems this is going to cause. You can see people are stressing out. The healer's down to half mana on a relatively simple pull. There's not a lot of trash. And now we're down to the final mob altogether. So let's look at how our tanks cope with this. Okay, so let's look at the most difficult one first, which is the Guardian Druid. No ranged interrupt. Our charge is an immobilize. If we immobilize a caster, we're never going to be able to drag them into a death ball. But Skull Bash is off the global cooldown, which is something very useful to us. So when we're doing this pull, we obviously cannot interrupt two of three casters to get everything into one space. We accept that and we move on. As a Guardian Druid, the best way of dealing with this is to, is to interrupt the furthest mob away, the furthest caster to our side, and then move in between the other two casters, and then that will create a a solid death ball there that is only three mobs wide that is nothing bad at all all our aoe is going to make contact all our casters and dps's aoe is going to make contact we're going to get a good death ball out of that so let's just see that in action Okay, so approaching into here, I'm instantly thinking what to do. I'm using a new ability called Ursol's Vortex to keep things dragged down. You can see I'm going to drop that in there. Interrupt on that guy. Skull Bash then, swiping as we do it. With Skull Bash being off the global cooldown, we can still do our initial AoE threat, our thrash, our swipe, whatever it is. Now look how the mobs are gathered. You can see the damage is focused on me. The damage that's going to go out onto the melee is just from Bubble Shield. There's nothing much we can do about that whatsoever. But you can see how quickly everything is dying. All the AoE is nicely just drawn into one area and our healer lost basically zero mana during that if you look at his mana before the pull look at the mana after he lost barely anything whatsoever and we're quickly off into the next pull no slowdown no downtime no big excessive damage and nice big dps Okay, let's talk about DKs in this situation. DKs have a variety of tools to do this. The best thing is your death and decay. Your death and decay will instantly say, I want my death ball to be there. And then, using death grip, we can easily drag things over. So death, uh, DKs have a much easier time of doing this. I think DKs tend to think their death grip is just a taunt. Or to pull a mob towards them and let the rest of the mobs come forward. I often see a lot of DKs just death grip a mob and let the rest of the mobs sort of work towards them. That is really the wrong way to be doing this. What we want to do is get our death and decay down. That's where we want the death ball. If there's a loose caster out of the way, we can death grip it in. And should we want to group up three casters, four casters, where we've got strangulate, we've also got mind freeze. We have a lot of tools as a DK to do this. So let's just see how it plays out. Okay, I'm moving in. I'm going to drop a death and decay right on that side. That's the initial aggro taking care of all those mobs. Uh, one of the guys tried to CC in my dungeon, I think not. But you can see straight away, just gripping in that caster, death ball created. Look at all the damage being focused at me. All the exterior damage is literally the guys taking some bubble shield damage. Nothing much we can do about that at all. But everything else focused on me, nice and clear. You can see the casters are having a great time, no issue at all. And boom, we're off. Mobs dead, super fast, super nice and tidy, and really no problems. As for the paladins, let's talk paladins. They have a pretty easy time with this. Avengers shield is literally just plan the direction of the Avenger shield, try and hit as many casters as possible, and now you've got Consecration that you can place anywhere. It's really very simple for the Paladin, so not much to talk about there. Let's just look at a demonstration of it, and you can see exactly how I would do it. So you're moving through, you're che checking it out, get that Consecration down, that's where your Death Ball is going to be. Interrupt the casters that are furthest away from where your Consecration is, and boom, there you go. Gather them very, very quickly, very, very easily. Again, as with our other tanks, you can see all the damage is focused on me. You're going to get some meleeers that are going to take some damage from a bubble shield but 
again, that's nothing of your concern whatsoever. You're creating these giant just kill boxes. The AoE is going to be extreme into there. Anybody who knows how to AoE is going to have a good time. And the healer is, look at them healers, man. No damage taken by many people at all. Nice, easy, controlled. Moving on straight to the next pack. Up oh, finally, it's the prop warrior, the king of the tanks. I will still remain to say. Uh, these need the Gag Order Glyph. You're going to need the Gag Order Glyph while you're tanking. Especially in your five mans. And Mr. Pandaria, this is really, really prevalent. Uh, make sure you've got your Glyph of gl Gag Order. You need your Heroic Throw to silence casters. Otherwise, your pulls are going to be sloppy. People are going to take a lot of extra damage. People are going to need to drink more. It's just going to be a mess. You don't want that. You need that Heroic Throw silence in order to make sure you're creating these nice death balls every single time. The low cooldown of Heroic Throw makes it so much easier. And the final thing to remember with your Prop Warrior Pulls is Charge Immobilizes. You don't really want to be immobilizing things, especially casters, especially while you're doing your pull, because that means that mobs are going to run past you, it's going to be a mess. A Heroic Throw, Heroic Leap combination when you do your pulls is the best thing ever. Quickly turn around, get your shockwaves on, get your death ball all nice and tidy, but make sure you're heroic throwing that caster that's the one that's out of the group that you want to come into the group. The heroic throw is going to do the aggro itself, heroic leap into the rest of the mobs, we're going to have a good time. So in the final thing I want to show you, it's not actually uh, me doing it correctly. I think we've all got the idea of how to go and silence the fire casters and bring them over to one particular side. In this one, I'm actually doing it wrong intentionally. Uh, I didn't silence anything. I'm not doing any of the interrupts. That was my plan, was not to do any of the interrupts. Unfortunately, the pack was taking too long, so I did start doing some of the interrupts. Ultimately, it's to show you the difference in time taken to actually kill a pack if we are not doing these sort of death ball techniques. You see, ultimately, the end of the death ball with the various interrupts and stuff coming into play after it was just taking too long. But you can see the t length of time it takes to finish these packs off if you're not getting that nice early attack in and doing the majority of the work. It's so much more effort. And Mr. Pandaria is going to take forever. Believe me, those mobs have a lot of health. So I hope this has really helped you out, guys, okay? A lot of people ask me just for the basics of how do we do things on a DK, how do we do things on a Paladin, how do we do things on a Feral Druid especially. So let's stick it all together and get this stuff ready because you're going to need this stuff very, very soon, all right? Especially gathering casters is one of the... This is generally the most difficult thing to do is to effectively gather casters. If you could do that, you could deal with any trash pack and you could start getting your dungeons to be really, really fast, especially if you're looking forward to the challenge modes. So there you go, ballers. You have a great day. That's the end of Tank Week. Moving on to something else next time. Relinquishes grasp on this world. How does it feel, boss? To watch them hack your mortal body to pieces.